All right, welcome everybody. I wanna talk about our last exception that might come up in solving the simplex method, and that's infeasibility. So one version of this is you might have a set of constraints that are not even feasible, right? You're optimizing over the empty set. And if you start doing the simplex algorithm, it'll figure that out for you. Okay, let me give you a longer um, intro into this. So if I have a optimization problem of this particular form where all of the constraints are less than or equal to's besides the non-negativity constraints, then what do you do? You add in slack variables, one slack variable per constraint, and then you get an easy starting basis. In your easy starting basis, the basis uh, variables are the slack variables. These are the slack variables that correspond to the identity matrix off to the side, giving you uh, the nearly independent column. Okay, but certainly you might not be given an equation in this form. Maybe you're given an equation where this, all of these are equals, okay? And then it's not necessarily easy to find a starting feasible solution. How are you gonna find a basic feasible solution? Earlier in the class, I shared a video where I tried to explain how finding a feasible solution is in some sense just as hard as finding an optimal one. Because if you can find a feasible solution, if you have an oracle to do that, then you get a feasible solution. You add a new constraint saying you have to be better than that prior solution. Find a new feasible solution. Add a new constraint saying you better be better than that prior feasible solution until you zero in on the true optimal. Okay, so let's just start trying to solve this linear program. I'm trying to maximize x1 plus 2x2 subject to these constraints. I don't have any inequality constraints, so I'm already in equational form. So I, I, I don't need to add slack variables to put it in equational form. We're already in equational form. But it's, it's not so obvious to find a feasible solution. What can I let x1, x2, and x3 be to satisfy um, these two equalities while the variables are non-negative, right? It's more than just linear algebra to solve these two equalities if I also want the variables to be non-negative. So by I, you might be able to plug in numbers and and find a feasible solution, but pretend you can't. You know, the, the first thing that you might try is just setting everything to be zero. And yeah, that, that doesn't work. You know, that fails our constraints. So if I have a thousand constraints and 10,000 unknowns, how are you gonna find this original feasible solution, this vertex that you can move along? So we're gonna build an auxiliary problem that finds our first basic feasible solution. Okay, so we're gonna add what are called auxiliary variables. They're sort of like slack variables, but don't call them slack variables, call them auxiliary variables. I should have chosen an easier word than auxiliary, but oh well. So what we're gonna do is x1 plus three x2, plus x3, and then we're gonna add in an auxiliary variable. The point being is it's easier to satisfy this constraint if it were less than or equal to, right? If it were less than or equal to, then we can put an x4 as our slack. So it's, it's motivated by the idea behind slack variables, but a little bit different. And then same thing for this other constraint. Okay, we've, we've really changed our problem, right? We're not trying to find an optimal solution. We're just trying to find any solution. 
So you need to let go of this problem that you're trying to maximize for a while, okay? So just um, be patient, you'll get back to that. But right now we're just trying to find any feasible solution. So we don't care about that maximization. What we instead are gonna maximize is negative x4 minus x5, okay? And, and the reason being is, come on, I just like totally cheated. I had equalities and then I put in an x4 to that equality. That can't be true unless x4 is zero, right? And I had this equality and then I put this x5 in it. That can't be true unless x5 is zero, right? So I'm trying to maximize this. If I find that I, you know, what's the largest this could be? Well, x4 and x5 are still non-negative. So the best I could do here, since x4 and x5 is non-negative, the best I could do is I could get that maximum to be zero if both x4 and x5 are zero, okay? But if I can get this to zero, then hey, x4 becomes zero, x5 becomes zero, and then I found a, a, a starting solution to my original system of equalities. You see that? And if I maximize this problem and x and the maximization problem turns out to be give me a negative value, then, well, it's impossible for x4 and x5 to both be zero. So I found out that this was infeasible. Right? Infeasible, there's no solution at all. So the objective function of this auxiliary problem is zero if and only if the original problem has a feasible solution. So this is our original. Questions about that? It's a bit of yoga. I, I add in x4 and x5, and then I ask, I'm trying to maximize negative four negative x4 minus x5, so I'm trying to get them both to be zero. If I can get them both to be zero, then I can ignore them, and I found a feasible solution. If this maximization problem returns a negative number, then it's impossible to solve my original equation, and it was infeasible to begin with. This is called phase one in linear programming. You're just trying to find any solution. And then phase two is when you return to this maximization problem to find, try to find the best vertex or best solution. Questions? Okay, let's do an example. Let's do this example. So <clears throat> in this new problem, you can see that my auxiliary variables are great basic variables. So I solve for x4 and x5, here they are. And now I'm trying to maximize negative x4 minus x5, which I can express using these equations. So I take the difference of those two equations and I'm trying to maximize negative six plus x1 um, plus five x2 plus two x3. All right, so we want to make this bigger, so let's just choose to pivot along x1. Um, <clears throat> from this equation, I can increase x1 as much as I want. I want from this equation, I can only increase x1 up to four. So that's the limiting equation. I solve for x1 in that equation. Here it is. And then for x5, it stays the same because there's no x1 in the equation for x5. And then into that x1, I plug this in, you know, to get negative six plus four is equal to negative two, et cetera. All right, 
Next, it looks like we could pivot either along x2 or x, x3. Let's arbitrarily choose to pivot along x3. So, um, I can increase x3 um, only by two coming from this equation. And from this equation, I can increase x3 up to four. So here's my limiting equation. So in my limiting equation, I solve for x3 and I get this. And then I plug that in into my prior equation for x1. And I also plug in my equation for x3, you know, right in here for my optimization function. And a lot of things cancel, the negative two and the two cancel, the two x2 and the negative two x2 cancel. And I'm left with negative x4 minus x5. All right, so now I don't wanna pivot at all, right? The best I can do is, is when x4 and x5 are both zero. So I let x4 and x5 be zero, and I find that, um, well, x2 is also a non-basic variable, so x2 has to be zero. And then I solve for x1 and x3, and I get two and two. So I've, I've optimized this auxiliary problem, and I obtained the value zero, okay? So I found that the objective function in this auxiliary problem was zero. So the original problem does have a basic feasible solution. It's just two, zero, two. Ignore x4 and x5. We were able to make those zero. If I optimize this problem and I didn't get both x4 and x5 being zero, then I would have known my original problem had no solutions at all. Okay, so now I can start the simplex method on my original problem. And only now do I care again about this maximization problem. I found a vertex of my feasible region, and now I wanna move in the direction that increases the function I actually care about. Okay, I've just copied the original problem before I introduced the auxiliary variables down again. Um, so x4 and x5 are zero. So we're just gonna let these be zero. The tableau that you found for the auxiliary problem gives you a nice tableau for this new problem after you cut off x4 and x5. So one way of thinking about that is um, as follows. My basic feasible solution is two, zero, two. So that means x1 and x3 are basic variables and x2 is a non-basic variable. So that's how I know I wanna write x1 and x3 in terms of x2. When I solve for x3 in terms of x2, I just get x3 is two minus x2. And then I can plug that in right here to solve for x1 in terms of x2. And I actually get two minus x2. But that work wasn't really needed, that work of plugging this in here. It turns out you can always get this tableau by cutting off x4 and x5 from where we were before. Okay, and what are we trying to maximize? We're trying to maximize x1 plus 2x2 but I better write x1 in terms of x2. So when I add 2x2 to this, I get 2 plus x2. Yep. So I want to pivot along x2. My limiting equation is the second one, because it says x2 can only increase up to one, whereas the first equation says x2 can increase up to two. So the second equation, when I solve for x2, I get um, x2 
is equal to one minus one half x3. Plug that in up here and I get x1 is equal to one plus one half x3. And my optimization function in terms of x3, I just um, plug in for x2 and I get three minus one half x3. X3 had better be zero in my non-basic solution. So I set X3 to be zero. I find that X1 and X2 are both equal to one. The value when I set X3 equals zero is I get the value three. And I can't do any better because X3 always has to be non-negative. So that's it. In summary, what I did is I took uh, an optimization problem where there was no obvious um, feasible solution. I set up this auxiliary problem to find a feasible solution, 202. You could see that 202 really was a feasible solution because two plus two is four and two is equal to two. And then once I had a feasible solution, I did a simplex method on it. You can find your original vertex, you know, in this tableau form, just by cutting off the auxiliary variables you added. And then you solve the simplex method as you've already learned to go from this starting feasible solution to the best one. Questions? Thanks everybody.